Hello and welcome back to part two of our serializing output data for the PIC microcontroller uh, set family. Uh, we're going to be uh, looking at some software on this. However, w one thing before we get into the software I do want to make a clarification on was I said that these had 10k ohm resistors. I, I really meant 470 ohm, so I apologize about that. I had 10k here, so I corrected that. The, the 10k, you, you would basically never see these light up. The, it, it would be such little tiny current going through here that these wouldn't even light up. So I apologize about that. Need to be These needed to be 470 ohm resistors on this. but. Anyway, the last video we explained the hardware and kind of went through the data sheet of it. So now let's uh, move on to our software. We essentially have basically our include statement. Uh, we've got our mem clear, no watchdog, no protect. Use delay. We are definitely going to be using the delay function, so we need to include our delay and put in what type of clock we're using, which I'm just using the internal oscillator, setting it for 4 megahertz. Um, we've got our source file in our work project as well as our header file and that's that's important to do otherwise it won't build correctly we've basically labeled our pins uh, with basically stuff that makes sense makes the code a little more readable instead of having just pin numbers everywhere and so we'll go ahead and get into our function we wrote I wrote a function that's serial to parallel um, basically it takes in an 8-bit either binary hex whatever number you know decimal number you want takes in an 8-bit integer and uh, basically rolls through it and builds the serial number that goes out to the to the shift register. So this is our if, and we're going to be doing some more bitwise um, manipulation here. We've got the we're anding these two numbers together. Basically, the number 128 we're anding with whatever 8-bit number we're dealing with and checking to see if that is basically true and if so we'll output a high basically we're looking for the one here we're looking to see where the one is or ones that are that are um, in the number <clears throat> and then we'll output a high accordingly otherwise we'll output a low and then we'll flip flop the the serial clock and continue on and also every time we do this we shift the binary numbers to the left kind of like we did uh, when we were building uh, based off of pulling the information from the chip and building one that's kind of the same operation now some sometimes that's a little confusing when you see it in code form so I kind of basically made a little uh, kind of pictorial deal that you can look at uh, let's bring that up of kind of how this works so basically what it's doing is you've got your bits uh, 1 through 8 you know, and this is basically our number. We're picking an example number of we're shifting it and we're shifting out the number eight, basically. So in binary, you know, you got the number eight here. And basically we're ending it with one twenty eight is what we're doing. And so essentially what it does is it'll end these two numbers together, get a result. So it gets zero here. Zero. Then it's gonna take this whole thing and move it to the left. So basically this number, this zero falls off the whole thing moves to the left and we gain a zero on the end so see that so now we we had four now we have three and we had three and now we have four basically so it just drops off and moves over so then the and then we and again and then same thing happens we cut off the other zero and comes in we just keep going and basically and you gotta think of it don't think of it as this number falls off and moves over to here because no that's not true this number completely goes away and we gain a zero because in the case of down here from here to here if you notice that one just just goes away it does not move to the other side so don't don't get confused with that um, but basically we've got our number our number eight basically zero 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 one twenty eight zero 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 and in when it's embedded in an if statement like this Basically, the if statement when you're doing this is basically saying, is it you're not putting any type of, of you know equals or any type of operator on the end of it. You're basically saying, is this statement true? Is what you're basically saying. Uh, those of you that aren't real super keen with with C and bitwise manipulation and things like that, basically you're saying, is this true? So when it's equal to basically not zero, it's true. So every time that this comes out zero, it's going to be zero. And what will happen is you'll jump to the else because this won't be true. It'll be false. So it'll jump to the else and do the low, which is what we want. Every time this is false or a zero, we want output a zero, a low. But then when it's true, basically when you get a number, um, then it's true. Then you, 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 output, you output a high and you get a one. So essentially, you see the number eight here. Well, pretty much, you know, it's just basically been 
turned on its side and you've got the number eight here too. So that's how it works. And and then and that's what that's what this does. This is the shifting. This shifts it to the left, and that's what the one is, is one digit. If you wanted to do more, I mean you could in this sense it wouldn't make sense, but that's that's what that less than less than equals operator does. And then same with the ampersand. That's why um, you use a single ampersand. You don't want you don't want to use the double ampersand, otherwise it treats it as as a you know, like a comparison, you're saying this one and that one, you know, if this one is true and this one is true, is what you're saying with a double and percent. So you only want the single one, you want it to actually do an operation, you want it to and both of these together. And so that's pretty much how it works. And then at the very end, once you get through rolling all your data in, like I said, uh, back when we looked at the data sheet, let's go grab it, go down where we were at, Oop, a little too far. Basically, so you don't have to use these two clear functions. You, and like I said, you just roll all these in. Do not flip the latch clock yet. Just roll all of them in. And then when you're done rolling all your data in, then flip the latch clock. And then it presents the outputs. That way your outputs aren't, you know, being dynamic as your data is changing. They're not moving along with it. They're, they're staying static until you tell it to change. And that just, sa like I said, that just saves you another pin. However, if you have a circuit where you, you need this buffer's, you know, third state of high impedance, uh, then you're going to want to pull the, the extra pin out, pull another, f you know, a fourth pin out and hook up your, hook up your buffer. But for our case, we, we don't need to. And so, so see, that's right here. We've got our low to high transition for our latch clock. And so that, that does our latch clock and makes it where it then uh, it then it then rolls it in at the end. It it presents the output at the end using the latch clock. And basically, he, there's nothing to the main function. We're going to set up our our tri-state uh, registers to all output because we're not inputting anything this time. We're we're just sending stuff out. So all output. We're going to make sure our shift clock is low. So that way up here, because if it wasn't low, um, since we do a high low transition, it it wouldn't do anything the first time around. It'd be the second time around it would get, and you'd get, you'd lose the first bit, because it has to be a low to high transition. So you initialize it low, and then that way you can go, you can go, it'll move to high and then back to low once when you roll through your code, or through the function. And then basically we're just doing a delay of 100 milliseconds, and this is where it gets kind of fun. You can just, you can play with this delay number and make your lights move faster or slower if you decide to actually do this, this small little experiment. Um, you can play with that number and get them to go fast or slow or whatever you want to do. But basically, if you look at it, I'm basically taking the number one and just moving it from one to the next. You know, just it's there, then it moves over one, two, three, four, and just it moves from right to left, basically. And that will make your lights uh, go around the circle, basically. And then if you want this, uh, the way this is set up, it's only going to do this once. If you want, you can add your fo your infinite for loop or while loop or you know whatever loop that you like to use uh, to make infinite. I'll just make this look pretty by indenting it. There we go. And now it will hit build zero zero warning. So we'll then we'll uh, then that way you, it'll just it'll just keep doing. It. It'll run around in a circle forever. But that's basically it. Um, I did it in binary. You can always uh, use hex numbers if you want. Um, if you don't like seeing all the binary numbers, it's just sometimes when you're dealing like like with LEDs or something like that, it, it helps to look at the binary because you can see where the one is. If you're doing like one at a time, you know, and you using LEDs when to turn them on and off and things like that, it sometimes helps to see the binary because you can actually see it, you know, mapped out in it. Um, but yeah, basically that's that's pretty much it for our for the programming side of it. Uh, fairly straightforward. Just uh, write your write your function. Um, just to roll it in. Use your bitwise operations. Uh, definitely use those to your advantage. Uh, and happy hunting and good luck. I will be probably posting our next one. We'll get into interfacing with a PC. That will be some fun stuff. A little prelude to what we'll be doing. We'll be um, working with the Max 232 uh, receiver transceiver chip that is um, basically a way of being able to talk to a uh, PC using a PIC. Um, we'll also be getting into some bootloaders. Um, 
I think one that we'll be using is the Tiny Bootloader. If any of you are familiar with that one, uh, we'll actually be—I'll uh, actually be going through the steps of how to configure that, get it on your chip, and uh, set up all the RS-232 stuff so that you can use a PC and actually in the middle of your code running you could flash new code to it whenever you wanted without actually having to pull the chip out of the board or having to have an expensive uh, in-circuit serial programmer uh, to program your device. You can just uh, set an RS-232 port off the side of your device and program it straight from your computer. So we'll be dealing with some fun stuff like that as well as we'll get into the I squared C bus and things like that. So that's a prelude to what's coming up. I thank you all for watching and happy, happy circuiting.